Hello and welcome back to the lab. But I want to do a quick follow-up video to the GPSDO video I did a week or two ago. Um, I finally received the matching uh, distribution amplifier that goes with the GPSDO. Um, the GPSDO was uh, shipped to me from a warehouse here in the States, so it arrived within a couple of days. But the matching uh, distribution amplifier um, actually had to come from overseas, so it took about two weeks. But it got here yesterday, and uh, so I hooked it up, and I wanted to demonstrate it now. The distribution amplifier takes the 10 megahertz input from the GPSDO, and it has eight separate BNC outputs. So it's not really so much of an amplifier as it is a, a buffer that provides eight outputs, can allow you to... Um, to uh, connect to up to eight different uh, instruments that take uh, 10 megahertz reference input to phase lock all your instruments together. And it just so happens that I have at least eight of them that I need to phase lock. So this will fit my needs perfectly. So let's take a look, take a look at the output signal of the GPS DO through the distribution amplifier on my scope and see what it looks like. Okay, so the upper trace, channel A on my scope, is connected to the output of the distribution amplifier. And it looks like we have a nice clean sine wave. Um, looks like about 3.3 volts peak to peak uh, sinusoidal waveform. Uh, I don't know what that is in dBm, uh, uh, but uh, it's plus about, it's about plus, uh, I don't know. But it's 3.3 volts peak to peak. Very nice waveform, and that should be um, sufficient to synchronize all of my instruments uh, to the 10 megahertz reference output from the GPSDO. Now, um, so what I've done is I've hooked up the output of my 3325A that I repaired in the last video um, to the channel B of the scope, the lower trace of the scope. And uh, I've set it to 10 megahertz and also about 3.3 volts peak to peak. And when I turn the output on, you can see that the frequency on the 3325A is significantly off from the 10 megahertz reference standard. Um, it appears to be, mm, I, I don't know how many hertz off that is, but uh, it looks like. Uh, it's not very close at all. Um, that is before we have the distribution amplifier connected to the external reference input on the rear of the 3325A. So what I'm gonna do now is take the coax from the rear external reference input on the rear of my 3325A and connect it to the one of the eight outputs on the distribution amplifier and hopefully we can get it to reference lock. All right, now you can see the external reference indicator is lit, indicating that the 3325 is now uh, synchronized, phase locked to an external reference on the rear panel. Um, now you can see on the trace of the scope, the two waveforms are synchronized and they're both at, running at exactly the same frequency. So that's how we're going to be using the GPSDO and the distribution amplifier to um, synchronize all of our instruments that have an external reference to the same GPS disciplined oscillator. So I had a viewer ask me if I could open up the GPSDO and we could take a look at what's inside. So that's what I did. Um, here, obviously, we have the um, OCXO. It's an oven-controlled crystal oscillator. Um, I can feel that it's still warm because I had it plugged in the whole time. Um, this looks like maybe, a, a, I don't know, a voltage regulator chip or maybe an output amplifier chip or something. It has a heat sink on it. Um, we've got a couple of electrolytic capacitors here for filtering, obviously. There's a very tiny little battery over here, a little tiny battery, I guess to store 
something in uh, NVRAM or something like that, some store some configuration settings or offsets or some other data. I don't know. I don't know exactly what any of this stuff is. Um, obviously here, the, the GPS antenna comes in through here. So this must be the GPS receiver inside this little can uh, on a single chip, essentially. Lots of support circuitry, lots of all sur surface mount stuff. Controller chip, obviously. Some big inductors, some more various associated surface mount circuitry. I don't have any information about this stuff. I don't have a schematic or data sheet or anything. Um, but that's the inside of this instrument, this little uh, GPS DO. You see the the front panel, of course, is just a, a PCB, an FR4 PC board. Um, a ground plane on the rear panel to provide complete shielding. Very well constructed, I think. Now here's the inside of the Jeep of the uh, distribution amplifier. You see, we have a big uh, heat sink. Seventy-eight oh five. That's a five volt regulator chip right there. So I guess it takes the twelve volt input and then drops it down to five volts, and we got some more capacitor filtering here. Um, you can see on this board, there is a spot for another um, OCXO oven reference oscillator. Um, it's one of the possibilities that you can get this distribution amplifier with its own built-in 10 megahertz oscillator. Um, so you could use it as a standalone uh, frequency standard and a distribution amplifier. Um, this one just does not have that option. It has only the distribution amplifier. On the underneath side, more um, surface mount circuitry. I was thinking this must be uh, analog amplifiers, but in fact, it probably is digital logic, uh, CMOS or something like that. In fact, all these little chips are probably uh, digital uh, buffer chips or inverters or something like that, perhaps. Um, you can see these uh, strings of capacitors and inductors. Those are obviously a low pass filter on the output to allow only the 10 megahertz signal to pass through to clean up the digital um, output into a more of a sinusoidal waveform by eliminating all the harmonics and allowing only 10 megahertz to pass through. I'm sure that's what that is because they lead to the BNC connectors. And again, we have um, solid ground plane on the back of the front panel to provide complete shielding of the unit. Also very nicely constructed, I would say. So there you have it, the GPS disciplined oscillator and matching distribution amplifier. I will probably end up mounting both of these units in some inconspicuous place underneath the bench top or something so that no one will know how I control my classic vintage HP gear with such high precision. Thanks for watching and please click like and subscribe and uh, click the bell notification icon so you'll be notified when my next video comes out. Thanks again.